Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're going to read an important teaching from Dr. Joseph Murphy on success. This one is called Three Steps to Success. Joseph Murphy was a profound writer on personal development, imagination, the subconscious mind. I always find something special in any lecture I read from Dr. Joseph Murphy. Three Steps to Success Success means successful living, a long period of peace, joy, and happiness on this plane. There is no success without peace of mind. If you have ulcers and high blood pressure, that's certainly not successful living, that's failure. The eternal experience of harmony, health, peace, and wholeness is the everlasting life spoken of in the Bible. The real things of life such as peace, harmony, integrity, security, and happiness are intangible. They come from the world within. The outside world will not give them to you. They come from the deep self of man. Meditating on these qualities builds these treasures of heaven in your subconscious mind. It is where moth and rust do not consume, where thieves do not break through and steal. There are steps to success. The first step is to find out the thing you love to do and do it. Now that's simple. Success is in loving your work. If you don't love your work, you are certainly a failure. You are not a success. Though if a man is a psychiatrist, it is not adequate for him to get a diploma and place it on the wall. He must keep up with the times, attend conventions, continue studying the mind and its workings. The successful psychiatrist visits clinics, reads the latest scientific articles. In other words, he's involved in the most advanced methods of alleviating human suffering. The successful psychiatrist or doctor must have the interests of his patients at heart. If he doesn't, he's really a failure. Someone may say, how can I put the first step into operation? I don't know what I should do. In such a case, pray for guidance as follows. It's very simple. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind reveals to me my true place in life, where I am doing what I love to do, divinely happy and divinely prospered. Repeat this prayer quietly, positively, and lovingly to your deeper mind. As you persist with faith and confidence, the answer will come to you as a feeling, a hunch, or a tendency in a certain direction. A boy in college is studying philosophy. All of a sudden he stops and he changes over to medicine or something else because he has asked for guidance to his true place in life. It will come to you clearly and in peace as an inner silent awareness, an inner silent knowing of the soul whereby you know that you know. The second step to success is to specialize in some particular branch of work and then know more about it than anyone else. For example, if a young man chooses chemistry as his profession, he should concentrate on one of the many branches in this field. There's pharmaceutical chemistry, analytical chemistry, biochemistry, and so on. Then he should give all of his time and attention to his chosen specialty. He should become sufficiently enthusiastic to try to know all there is available about his field. If possible, he should know more than anyone else in that particular field because he's specializing. The young man should become ardently interested in his work and should desire to serve mankind. He that is greatest among you, let him become your servant. There is a great contrast in this attitude of mind in comparison to that of the man who only wants to make a living or just get by. Getting by is not true success. That's mediocrity. Man's motive must be greater, nobler, and more altruistic. He must serve others, thereby casting his bread upon the waters of his mind. The third step is the most important one of all. You must be sure that the thing you want to do does not positively affect your success only. Your desire must not be selfish. It must benefit humanity. The path of a complete circuit must be formed, like a circle. In other words, your idea must go forth with the purpose of blessing or serving the world. It will then come back to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It might be a book you write, which will lift up mankind. It might be some great music. You might have some idea like Edison that will light up the world. 
It is to benefit yourself exclusively. The complete circuit is not formed, and you may experience a short circuit in your life, which may consist of limitation or sickness. Some people may say, oh yes, but Mr. James made a fortune, or John Jones made a fortune in selling fraudulent oil stock. A man may seem to succeed for a while, but the money he obtained by fraud will usually take wings and fly away. When we rob from one another, we rob from ourselves because we are in a mood of lack and limitation. This may manifest itself in our body, home, life, or affairs. We impoverish ourselves and attract all manner of limitation to us. In his ignorance, man doesn't know he's robbing himself. That's how funny it is. What we think and feel we create. We create what we believe. Even though a man may have accumulated a fortune fraudulently, he is not successful. There is no success without peace of mind. Supposing a man has ulcers of the stomach, high blood pressure, migraine headaches, arthritis or cancer, and he has a $50 million fortune. Is he successful? That's not being a success because he's not successful in the art of living. You are here to live life gloriously. You're here to have peace of mind, love, companionship, right action. You're here to release the imprisoned splendor that is within. You are here to have an inner sense of poise, balance, and equilibrium, equanimity, and serenity. You're here to express more of God every day. What good is man's accumulated wealth if he cannot sleep nights, is sick, or has a guilt complex? Though wealth is not a deterrent to happiness, or peace of mind, success, or anything else. A man may be worth a million dollars and be very spiritual, godlike, and some of them are magnanimous and generous. Many of the multimillionaires in this country and other parts of the world, they scatter, yet they prosper. They're doing incalculable good, spending millions to banish malaria and build hospitals and many other things. They can't count the millions that come back. Some so-called poor people are very envious and jealous of those who become successful. They impoverish themselves, attracting more lack and limitation. I knew a man in London who told me of his exploits. He had been a professional pickpocket and had amassed a large amount of money. He had a summer home in France and lived in a royal fashion in England. His story was that he was in constant dread of being arrested by Scotland Yard. I was his guest one time in a certain part of London where he was teaching young boys how to pickpockets. Yes, He had many inner disorders, which were undoubtedly caused by his constant fear and deep-seated guilt complex. He knew he was doing wrong. He knew he was poisoning the minds of these young boys. He knew they would subsequently end up in jail in London, but he was full of avarice and greed. He wasn't interested in the boys. He was interested in the money they were stealing, from which he would get a small percentage. The deep sense of guilt attracted all kinds of trouble to him and he subsequently surrendered to the police and served a prison sentence. After his release from prison, he sought psychological and spiritual counsel and became transformed. He went to work and became an honest, law-abiding citizen. He was able to help others. He found what he loved to do. He was happy. He became transformed by the renewal of his mind. A successful person loves his work and expresses himself fully. Success is contingent upon a higher ideal than the mere accumulation of riches. The man of success is the man who possesses great psychological and spiritual understanding. If you don't have all the money you need to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, you're certainly not a success. You should have all the money you need for your family. If your wife needs a new car, you should be able to go out and buy one. If your son wants to go to Paris to study music, you should be able to send him there. You should not be a success except you are able to do all the things that you really want to do when you want to do it. Then, you are as rich as Croesus. All you have to realize is that God is the source of your supply, and all your needs are met at every moment in time and point of space. Write that in your subconscious mind, and you'll never want all the days of your life. Many of the great industrialists today depend upon the correct use of their subconscious mind for their success. Many of the great institutions in this country practice the golden rule. There are billion dollar corporations and many of you know exactly who they are. There was an article published years ago about Flagler, an oil magnate. When he was young, he was very poor and he admitted that the secret of his success was his ability to see a project in its completion. 
In his case, he closed his eyes and imagined a big oil industry, saw trains running on the tracks, heard whistles blowing, and saw smoke, though he didn't have any money yet, as he told the reporter from the electrical experimenter. He was a poor boy, but he knew there was oil in those fields, and having seen and felt the fulfillment of his prayer, his subconscious mind brought about its realization. He attracted to himself men with money, engineers, chemists, physicists, oilmen, and all the things that were necessary for the unfolding of his dream. Just like you put a seed in the ground, it undergoes dissolution, and there's a wisdom within that seed that attracts to it phosphates and sulfur, calcium, enzymes, and all things from the soil. When it comes above the ground by a process of photosynthesis, it extracts from the atmosphere and the rays of the sun everything necessary to bring forth the most complex chemical compounds. Beyond the ken of the wisest man, that's the wisdom in the seed. If you imagine an objective clearly, you will be provided with the necessities in ways you know not of through the wonderful working power of your subconscious mind. In considering the three steps to success, you must never forget the underlying power of the creative forces of your subconscious mind. This is the energy in back of all steps in any plan of success. Your thought is creative. Thought fused with feeling becomes a subjective faith or belief, and according to your belief is it done unto you. Many of the greatest men in this country who contributed to its growth landed penniless in New York and Boston and other places. Many couldn't even speak the language. One of them was a man called Giannini, a peddler. He had a fruit cart and sold pencils and groceries from door to door. He studied and learned the language and then became interested in economics. He studied at night and he was able to help farmers by loaning them money. He formed the biggest bank in the world, called the Bank of America. I suppose that's the reason many people are jealous of him, because he was successful. He rolled up his sleeves, he went to work, he studied at night, he poured over books, he listened to his teachers, then he did good. As there were many farmers who were going bankrupt, and Giannini loaned them money and preserved their farm. He gave service, and that bank is the greatest bank in the world today, founded by a penniless immigrant. He had a dream, he had a vision. Isn't that true of thousands and thousands of men, some of the greatest physicists, scientists, doctors, and surgeons? Like the great mathematician Einstein and many others, they contributed to the world. Knowledge of a mighty force in you which is capable of bringing to pass all your desires gives you confidence and a sense of peace. Whatever your field of action may be, you should learn the laws of your subconscious mind. Get a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Get another book called the Infinite Power to Be Rich. I wrote those two books many years ago. They are translated into many languages and they're immensely popular. They give you the key to impregnating your subconscious mind with success, with harmony, with peace, with right action, illumination, and inspiration. When you know how to apply the powers of your mind, when you are expressing yourself fully and giving of your talents to others, you are on the sure path to true success. If you are about God's business or any part of it, God by his very nature is for you. So who can be against you? With this understanding, there is no power in heaven or on earth to withhold success from you. You are successful when you are successful in your prayer life, your relationship with people, in your chosen profession, and your communion with things divine. A movie actor told me that he'd had very little education, but he had a dream as a boy of becoming a successful movie actor. Out in the field mowing hay, driving the cows home, or even when milking them, he would constantly imagine he saw his name in big lights at a large theater. Here's a man who didn't know anything at all about the laws of mind, yet he was using the law. I kept this up for years, he said, until finally I ran away from home. I got extra jobs in the motion picture field, and the day finally came when I saw my name in great big lights, just as I did when I was a boy. Then he added, I know the power of sustained imagination to bring success. The Bible puts it this way, call things that be not as though they were, and the unseen become seen. I told you before it came to pass, that when it did come to pass you might believe. Here's a boy mowing hay, who imagines his name in lights on a great theater. He's living that role in his mind, it sinks down into his subconscious, becomes an impression. Whatever is impressed in the subconscious, 
must be expressed as form, function, experience, and event. That's the great law of your mind. 30 years ago, I knew a young pharmacist who was receiving $40 a week plus commission on sales. That was a very good salary in those days. After 25 years, I will get a pension and retire, he said to me. I said to this young man, why don't you own your own store? Get out of this place, raise your sights, have a dream for your children. Maybe your son wants to be a doctor, perhaps your dieter desires to be a great musician. Perhaps she would like to go to Europe to study under the great Carteau. His answer was that he had no money. But he soon began to awaken to the fact that whatever he could conceive as true, he could give conception. I explained to him that wealth is a state of consciousness, a state of mind. Health is a state of mind. You have as much vitality as you have appropriated, as much wisdom as you have appropriated, as much peace as you have appropriated, and you have as much wealth as you have established in your subconscious mind, because you must have the mental equivalent of anything you want in this life. A millionaire or a multimillionaire has the exact equivalent of that in his subconscious mind. The first step toward this man's goal was his awakening to the powers of his subconscious mind, which I briefly elaborated on for his benefit. His second step was his realization that if he could succeed in conveying an idea to his subconscious mind, the latter would somehow bring it to pass. He began to imagine that he was in his own store, imagination the keyboard to success. The ancient Hebrews called it the workshop of God because whatever you imagine and feel to be true comes to pass. He mentally arranged the bottled, dispensed prescriptions and imagined several clerks in the store waiting on customers. Mentally, he worked in that imaginary store. He visualized a big bank balance as well. Here's a man getting $40 a week, but using his mind constructively. Like a good actor, he lived the role. Act as though I am and I will be. This pharmacist put himself wholeheartedly into the act, living, moving, and acting on the assumption that he owned the store. The sequel was interesting. He was discharged from his position and found new employment with a large chain store. He became manager and later on district manager. He saved enough money in four years to provide a down payment on a drug store of his own. He called it his dream pharmacy. It was exactly the store I saw in my imagination, he said. He became a recognized success in his chosen field and was happy doing what he loved to do. Some years ago, I gave a lecture to a group of businessmen on the powers of imagination and the subconscious mind. In the lecture, I pointed out how Goethe used his imagination wisely when confronted with difficulties and predicaments. His biographers point out that he was accustomed to filling many hours quietly holding imaginary conversations. It is well known that his custom was to imagine one of his friends before him in a chair, answering him in the right way. In other words, if he were concerned over any problems, he imagined his friend giving him the right or appropriate answer accompanied with the usual gestures and tonal qualities of the voice, and he made the entire imaginary scene as real and as vivid as possible. One of the men present at this lecture was a young stockbroker. He proceeded to adopt the technique of Garta. He began to have mental imaginary conversations with a multimillionaire banker friend of his who used to congratulate him on his wise and sound judgment and compliment him on his purchase of the right stocks. He used to imagine these imaginary conversations until he had psychologically fixed them as a form of belief in his mind. And that's by repetition, repeating a little movie that you create yourself in your mind over and over again. Doesn't it sink down into your subconscious? Of course it does. This broker's inner talking and controlled imagination certainly agreed with his aim, which was to make sound investments for his clients. His main purpose in life was to make money for his clients to see them prosper financially by his wise counsel. He is still using his subconscious mind in his business, and he's a brilliant success in his field of endeavor. In other words, he was using someone else to impregnate his subconscious mind with success, achievement, and victory. There's a boy working with me. His name is Robbie Wright. He's studying electronics, and he has a very prominent position in De Molay, the youth organization, and he's sent out to collect money. He imagines that I am congratulating him on his success at night before he goes to sleep. He knows by doing this, he's impregnating his subconscious mind. He passes examinations with flying colors, 
He's an effective member of Dimole, and he's on the way to great things because he knows the laws of mind and the way of the infinite intelligence within him. He doesn't laugh at it, saying, what nonsense, he's using it. As he says, infinite intelligence leads and guides me in all my studies. I pass all examinations in divine order through divine love. Then the deeper mind responds and sometimes shows him the answers, dreams and visions that enable his success as he sleeps. His intuition is an inner feeling. He opens his textbook and knows all the things he'll be questioned about in the examination. That's a very common experience with students who use their mind. They know the questions before they're asked, sometimes intuitively, and sometimes they see them in dreams and visions. A boy who was attending high school said to me, I'm getting very poor grades. My memory is failing. I don't know what's going on. I discovered that the only thing wrong with this boy was his attitude, which was one of indifference and resentment towards some of his teachers and fellow students. I taught him how to use his subconscious mind and how to succeed in his studies. He began to affirm certain truths several times a day, particularly at night prior to sleep and also in the morning after awakening. These are the best times to impregnate the subconscious mind. He affirmed as follows, I realize that my subconscious mind is a storehouse of memory. It retains everything I read and hear from my teachers. I have a perfect memory and the infinite intelligence in my subconscious mind constantly reveals to me everything I need to know at all my examinations, whether written or oral. I radiate love and goodwill to all my teachers and fellow students. I sincerely wish for them success and all the blessings of life. This young man is now enjoying a greater freedom than he's ever known. He's at Caltech receiving all as he constantly imagines the teacher and his mother congratulating him on his success in his studies. In buying and selling, remember that your conscious mind is a starter and your subconscious mind is the motor. You must start the motor to enable it to perform its work. Your conscious mind is the dynamo that awakens the power of your subconscious mind. The first step in conveying your clarified desire, idea, or image to the deeper mind is to relax, immobilize the attention, get still, and be quiet. This quiet, relaxed, and peaceful attitude of mind prevents extraneous matter and false ideas from interfering with mental absorption of your ideal. Furthermore, in the quiet, passive, and receptive attitude of mind, effort is reduced to a minimum. The second step is to begin to imagine the reality that you wish to desire. For example, you may wish to buy a home and in your relaxed state of mind affirm it as follows. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind is all wise. It reveals to me now the ideal home, which is central ideal in a lovely environment, meets all my requirements and is commensurate with my income. I am now turning this request over to my subconscious mind and I know it responds according to the nature of my request. I release this request with absolute faith and confidence. In the same way that a farmer deposits a seed in the ground, trusting implicitly in the laws of growth. There are many ways by which your prayer may be answered. The answer may come through an ad in the paper, through a friend, or may be guided directly to a particular home which is exactly what you're seeking. The principle of knowledge in which you may place your confidence is that the answer always comes providing you trust the working of your deeper mind. Be sure you don't deny what you affirm. That's mockery, a sham. It's like pressing up and down in an elevator. You don't anywhere. Or you may wish to sell a home, land, or any kind of property. In private consultation with real estate brokers, I have told them of the way I sold my own home on Orlando Avenue years ago. Many of them have applied the technique I used with remarkable and speedy results. I placed a sign which read for sale by the owner in the garden in front of my home. The day after, I said to myself, as I was going to sleep, supposing you sold your home, what would you do? I would take that sign down and throw it in the garage. In my imagination, I took hold of the sign, pulled it up from the ground, placed it on my shoulder, went to the garage and threw it on the floor. I said jokingly to the sign, I don't need you anymore. I felt the inner satisfaction of it all, realizing it was finished. The next day, a man gave me a deposit of a thousand dollars and said to me, take down your sign, we will go into escrow right now. I immediately pulled up the sign and took it to the garage. The outer action conformed to the inner. There's nothing new about this. As within, so without. As above, so below. As in heaven, meaning your mind, so on earth, so on your body, in your environment. 
All of these are great laws of your deeper mind. The outside mirrors the inside. External action follows internal action. Realize this simple truth in regards to success and achievement in your work and business. Say to yourself and mean it. Today is God's day. I choose happiness, success, prosperity, and peace of mind. I am divinely guided all day long today, and whatever I do will prosper. Whenever my attention wanders away from my thoughts of success, peace, and prosperity are my good, I will immediately bring back my thoughts to the contemplation of God and His love, knowing that He careth for me. By day and by night, you're moving forward and growing prospering spiritually, mentally, intellectually, socially, and financially. There's no end to your growth. God loves you and cares for you. In this beautiful lecture, Joseph Murphy focuses on achieving success through a combination of mental, spiritual, and practical approaches. He emphasizes three main steps. One, find and pursue your passion. Success comes from engaging in work that you love. It's important to identify your true calling and pursue it with dedication. This involves not just finding your passion, but also continually learning and evolving within that field. The second step is specialization and mastery. Choose a specific area of work and aim to know more about it than anyone else. This involves a deep dedication and a constant thirst for knowledge in your chosen field. Success is attributed to this mastery and the desire to serve others through your work. The third step is to benefit humanity. Your goal should not solely focus on personal gain, but should also contribute positively to society. This idea is likened to creating a complete circuit where your actions benefit both yourself and others leading to a more profound and sustainable form of success. This delves into the importance of peace of mind and health as indicators of true success, contrasting this with the hollow victory of material gain obtained through negative means. It highlights the role of the subconscious mind in achieving success, advocating for positive affirmations and visualization to train the subconscious towards achieving one's goal. That little movie that he talks about is the perfect way to do that. He uses various anecdotes and examples, including historical figures and personal experiences, to illustrate these principles, as he always does so well. He emphasizes that true success encompasses not just financial stability, but also psychological and spiritual well-being, and the ability to live a fulfilling and harmonious life. So it's three simple steps. Can you follow those three simple steps? Can you find passion and purpose in your work? For many, that sounds like a difficult thing to do. I mean, who enjoys work, right? But when you are deeply passionate about your work, it doesn't feel like a chore, but rather a fulfilling and integral part of your life. This aligns with the idea that when you love what you do, you are more likely to excel at it and thus achieve success. This isn't about finding a job that you enjoy, but rather discovering a deeper calling or purpose that aligns with your innermost desires and strengths. The second again, remember, is specialization. Mastery in a specific area is key, and this involves an ongoing commitment to learning and staying updated in your field. If you focus on anything and really research it, you can become a master at it. It doesn't matter what classes or skills that you have. The concept is not just about acquiring knowledge for the sake of it, but to use that knowledge to contribute something valuable and unique to your field, thereby serving society in a meaningful way. And the final is most important. We talk about serving others all the time, but this is the ultimate step in finding success. If you have the first two steps, you're passionate about your work and you're specializing, but you don't have the third, you're not successful. True success is holistic and interconnected with the well-being of others. And so this transcends the traditional notion of success that focuses primarily on personal gain, like wealth or status, and points to a more fulfilling, sustainable form of success that includes making a real positive impact on the world. How can you serve others with what you do? A significant part 
of Murphy's philosophy revolves around the power of the subconscious mind. He always tells us that by nurturing positive thoughts and visualizations, we can program our subconscious towards achieving our goals. And this approach is not just about hard work and expertise, it's about cultivating a mindset and belief system that supports your goals. He's giving us the art of living, living a life that is balanced and fulfilling and in harmony with your values and the greater good of society. The principles outlined here are not just theoretical, but are intended to be applied in your everyday life. And I encourage you to engage with these ideas as I have through introspection and meditation, you will find it helps you immensely. Joseph Murphy was a true master and guru, and I always have great respect for the things that he says and the ways that he says it. So look for a success that combines your true passion, mastering it, and using it to benefit others. It's that simple. This perspective is comprehensive, incorporating every part of true success, not just personal growth, but mental health and your contribution to society. You can find success in three easy steps. Now is the time to begin. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.